show. Go I ahead, Ian. Ian's got a cooler shirt, so you should time. let him know. Speaking. I'm like, my mic's <laughs> off. I'm just not going to say anything. No, you go ahead and ask the question, Ian. Go for it. I'm going to turn my mic off. I want to ask our guest the question. I want to understand why you went into that position, why you said, I'm moving here. Let me hurry up and buy something and a rental. Like, where was your mind when you made that decision? That's a great question. So it was all in anticipation of real estate prices booming because of the Tesla effect. hundred percent. That was, and, and my, my thought process was if I can, if I can spend X amount of dollars to get the property that I'm comfortable with, regardless of how many units there are, there are, if I have X number of dollars invested into this area with Tesla moving here and with everybody else that will come here because of that move, plus other companies that have already moved, uh, there is no, there is no other way, but up. Right. right. So, yeah. and, and so to, that was yeah. by far the biggest reason, but then it also piggybacks on slightly on the, on the, uh, property tax question as well, because I think for the folks that live here and, and I say this from somebody that is coming from a different state, right. From Pennsylvania, who also has exposure to New Jersey, New York on sort of understands the real estate market in California and other places as well. I don't think the property tax question is really that big of a deal. Because the way I think most folks look at the property tax, especially if they're out of state. So, of course, people that are in the state are obviously going to have or people in the city are going to have an issue with it. But think about the rest of the population in the United States. Um, the, the property tax question, in addition to the income tax question, of which Texas has zero. Right. Which is I think I think it goes hand in hand with the property state tax is what is the value I'm getting by moving here. Right. I think that's the question that people get. And the property tax and an income tax, if, if there was one, is hand in hand with that. And I think what's happening, and, and I think the reason why that property tax issue for, for folks moving here and how property prices will probably go up over time is that people find a lot more value here by paying that property tax versus, say, New Jersey, where you have a higher property tax and you have state income tax and you have a higher sales tax and it sucks. Right. So it's like it, th that's really the big question around the, the property tax thing from from my lens. Um, I, I completely understand that people that live here seeing their property taxes go up is it, it sucks. But I think the, uh, the flip side of that, yeah, the question you have to ask yourself is what value is the city or the state giving back to me that would warrant them to raise that? Right. And if it's job growth and bringing a ton of really advanced companies to this area, then you could make an argument that there is a that there is a reason for them to raise it, but there has to be a direct correlation between value brought and the tax rate. And if and if somebody feels that that's not the case, and then they'll make the decision to say, well, I don't want to buy property here because I feel I'm not getting the money's worth. Texas's big uh, advantage is that there's no income tax and their economy is extremely good. And I think that's where people choose to forego, uh, you know, the, the property tax question, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it all boils down to how much do you have to pay out of pocket to live in the place that you want to be? Exactly. And it doesn't have to be property tax versus sales price. It has to be, it has to do with, like you said, Farzad, the, the economy as a whole. Right. Does this allow me to improve my current standing and financial situation or improve the quality of life for my family? If you can answer both of those questions, people will continue to move there, move here. Exactly. Well, exactly. So, so my question then becomes really for the people that lived here, who have lived here for a while, Ian, your mic, um, the people that have lived here for a while that had nothing to do with Tesla moving here. They've been in Austin for years, got a fixed, fixed rate, right? Uh, their taxes, they see their taxes go up, but now all of a sudden their taxes are really going up. What do you say to those people saying, Hey, but by the way, you have Tesla here. It's awesome. Cause I think that's, you know, I, I hear from a lot of people animosity about Tesla and a lot of these companies moving here primarily because their taxes go up. And they go up significantly, yet they had nothing to do with it. They're just trying to live their best life. So uh, I think there's there's two sides of that coin, right? I, I definitely agree with you that you know if you're going to be moving to Austin, you're moving here because of the potential that you see. But if you're somebody's been here for a while, you're also going, well, wait a second, I didn't do anything new. I've just lived here, and now my property taxes are out of control. The the thing is, so are their home equity values right like so they're still gaining the benefit but they're not going to sell you, right right they're not but they could also use that to completely renovate their home maybe to uh purchase an investment maybe to purchase a second home even if they don't sell maybe turn it into a rental purchase a new primary there are lots of variables 
in there because of this increase in equity as a result of them being here and being established and having uh, such a, a prevalent economy, economic growth. And if I can add my two cents there too, I think the other thing that goes hand in hand too is it goes back to value brought by the city or state. And so in theory, as that income, as that property tax goes up, theoretically, you should be able to get a higher wage from your employer as well. And if you aren't, that means that you probably should talk to them or find a new job that can allow you to have that because it's a direct correlation to the value that's in that state or city. Um, and I totally get like, I can very much sympathize it because if, if, I, if I'm somebody somewhere that I love and I have a house that I love, but my bills are going up because of other people coming here and they're disrupting my way of life, I totally get that sucks. Of course, man. Like, of course, that, that's going to suck. But but it sucks if you are either not willing or don't want to take advantage of the other value that the area is bringing, which is why those rates go up. Right. And I and if you don't want to take advantage of that, I completely understand that. That's just the unfortunate the unfortunate reality of a city or a state deciding to really grow its economic capability. That's what happens, you know? Um, and it's a kind of a crappy answer, but that's just the truth. That's how economics works, unfortunately. You know? I, I love the, the comment from uh, Juanita about a bunch of people turning 65. Now, the demographics of the city, I don't know currently today with so much traffic what the demographics are, but let's say it's, uh, the boomer demographic that is now moving out. Call me? Huh? What'd you just call me? I didn't call you anything. Yeah. And, <laughs> the millennial. Uh, and then the millennial and zennial and younger demographic buying all these houses, they're not familiar, not necessarily as familiar or worried about the property taxes to begin with. And, and there's a high probability that they're making multiples more in salary. So really it ends up just being a wash in a lot of cases. Now it washes. I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's going to be a balance and I, you know, I know that there's, you know, I know our city council and mayor have talked about this is something they continue to talk about, but I feel like in any city you go to, not just Austin, there's a lot of lip service and not enough actual service. So I'm curious to see what Austin actually does in the future because, um, you know, we can go to city council meetings and give our opinion until we're blue in the face, yet it's up to them and the voters to, to make a change. Thanks for watching this short of the Real Amigos podcast. For more live streams, hit here. For more clips, hit here. We'll catch you on the next one.